In this video, we're going to go over the linked list implementation that's provided in the book in the JSJF package. So just like our array list, this linked list is going to extend the list ADT interface. Notice that that list ADT interface will also implement, force you to implement the iterable interface. So you need to provide an iterator method. And then it has the methods remove first, remove last, remove, and then first and last, which just returned the first and last methods. It has a contains method returning a Boolean. If the element is in the list, is empty, returns true if it's empty, false if it's not. And then there's a size method, an iterator method, and a two string method. And this is the same interface that's implemented in the array list class that's also in the JSJF package. So our linked list is going to be made up of nodes. And our nodes are going to be of this linear node type and notice they take an element type so that we don't have to focus on a specific integer linked list or, or whatever they're going to hold the generic type so that this will work for any type and we can instantiate our linked list with whatever type we, we choose so this is a separate public class which is different from our linked list implementation that used a private class but you'll see that some of the functionality is essentially the same we have two data members. We have next, which is a reference to the next node. Notice it's a linear node reference. And we have the element, which will be a reference to the actual type we store. So as a reminder, our linked list is going to be made up of node objects. So each node has two references in it. One to some other object, which would be the element stored at that node or the payload. And then another reference to another linked list node. So our default constructor sets next an element both to null, or we can create a linear node that already has an element in it. But again, next is null because we're not pointing it to anything. So we have a getter and setter for the next node, a getter and setter for the element, and that completes our linear node class. So the linked list itself will work on making the connections. So our linked list is going to implement the list ADT, and it's also going to implement the iterable interface. We're going to have a count to keep track of how many elements we have in the list, and then we'll have references to the head and to the tail. And then finally, we have our mod count variable, and that's going to be what we use to keep track of the number of modifications we make to the list. We use that in our iterator so that if the number of elements in the list changes, we can invalidate the iterator and throw an exception. The default constructor creates an empty list with a count of zero and where the head and the tail are both null. And then we're going to have a remove first and last, but you'll notice these aren't implemented for you. These will be a good thing to try. You won't have an assignment to necessarily do these, but they make good practice because you've already seen us implement a linked list. So try to implement a linked list using the linear node class provided by the book. Now our remove method, and you'll notice we might have an empty collection. We might have an element not found exception. So we're going to list those in the throws clause because we're not actually going to catch those here. We want those to propagate. So if the list is empty, we're going to throw an empty collection exception because you can't remove something from an empty list. And that's defined in our exceptions folder. So if we look at that, all that does is it extends runtime exception and then makes a note that the collection is empty. And in this case, we're passing a linked list there. So then we need to find the element that we're looking for. So we set this Boolean found to equal false. We're going to stop, of course, once we find it. So we'll set that to true at that point. And then, and this is a pattern we're going to see over and over. We're going to keep track of a previous node and the current node. And the reason for that is this is a singly linked list. So once we find that node, we need to keep track of what's referring to that node because that node will then need to refer to the target node's next element. So we have to keep track of both of these as we go through the list. With a doubly linked list, this is a little bit easier because we can go back and forth. So our current node, we're going to start at the head. And we're going to do a loop until either we have a null as our next node, which means that we're at the end, or until it's not found. And at each of these nodes, we're going to check to see, is the element stored at that node equal to the target node? If so, we set found to be true. 
Otherwise, we set previous equal to current, and then we set current equal to current current's next element. And so if you think about how this works, we're sort of skipping along one step at a time through the linked list. So if we don't find the link, we're going to throw a not found or an element not found exception. And just similar to the other exceptions we've, we've defined, we're just going to extend runtime exception. And then we're going to use the super constructor, but we're going to pass in a custom string that says the target element is not in this. And then the collection name, which is passed in here. If this exception is thrown, that means we did find it. So we need to think about how to do this. Now, our easiest case is if the size is of the list is one, there's only one element in the list. So we set the head equal to the tail and they're both equal to null. If it's the head element, that's also a fairly easy case because we can just set the head equal to currents get next. And then the head will point to that next node, that second node, and we can be, we're done. If it's the tail, then the new tail is going to be previous. So we have to set the tail of the link list to that. And then whatever that new tails next is, we now have to set that to null because it's pointing to the element we're removing. And then finally, if the case, if the target is in the middle of the list, meaning it's not the first, it's not the last node, then we set previous next to currents next. And that basically, if you'll think about this, this sends a link that goes over current and now current is no longer part of the list. Once you're at previous, the next node would be currents get next. We've removed the node, so we decrement count and we've made a change, so we increment mod count. Again, mod count is not keeping track of how many elements in the list, it's keeping track of how many changes we've made to the list. And once we've done all this, we return currents, el the element that's referred to in the current node. And again, current is now no longer part of the list once we complete all this. So first and last are left as exercises for you. You can try those. Uh, I would recommend it just to see if you can get some practice with, with writing these functions. Contains is also not implemented, but contains actually is going to do something similar to remove in that it's going to iterate through the list saying current is current what I'm looking for. If not current equals current dot next, although it's a little simplified because you don't have to keep track of the previous node in this case, because you don't really care about that. You're just checking to see, did I find it? And either you get to the end of the list and you didn't find it, or you find it and then you can return true in that case. Is empty and size are pretty straightforward to implement. The two string again, we're going to have a, we're going to iterate using that current node format. Again, good exercise to try that. And then finally, we're going to implement an iterator. This will be like the other iterators we've seen. We're going to have a mod count. That's the mod count when we create the iterator. And then we'll have a current, which is a reference to our, the current element that the iterator is pointing to. Not the linked list, the iterator. So when we start off, we're going to point to the head node and the mod, and we set the mod iterator mod count to whatever the mod count is once this actual iterator object is instantiated. The has next method, again, we're checking to make sure the mod count hasn't changed. Otherwise, we throw the exception. If we haven't changed, then we return the result of comparing current equal to null. Because again, if current is pointing to a node, then great. That means that there's a, a next node. But if it's current is null, that means we've gotten to the tail. And you'll see that in the next method. So next, again, calls has next first to see if there's something left. And if not, we throw an exception. Also keep in mind that this tracks the concurrent modification exception, which is why we have this throws clause because has next might throw that. So we have to say that next will too. If there is a next element, then we say that the result is equal to the element stored there. We don't want to return a node. We want to return the element. Notice the return type is T. And then we say that current is equal to current dot get next. So this will iterate through the loop, through the list until we get to the tail. Tails next is null. So this would set current to null, which again would make this result false. And then we're not going to implement the remove method. So this is a quick introduction to linked lists using in the JFJF package. Again, this is slightly different than the one we implemented, but uh, it'll be good practice if you want to try to go in and, and fill in these methods yourself.